Brunnels, your poor husband. <laughs> that was some funny shit, though. Yes, she was. That was, I mean, it, it was, true. I watched it again. It was so funny. And, like, that's what I imagine. People be, like, walking down the street, listen to the podcast, and just start busting out laughing. Are we ready? Ready. Hello, and welcome back to mm -hmm. Vegan Corn Hub. And this show is called More B.S. More B.S. Oh, I love that name. I love it, too. Y'all know what that means? More of a bed and shop. Even though you probably think it's bullshit. I know that's what you thought. But you're here to bullshit with us a little bit, right? And what are they going to do? They're going to follow us. You're going to follow, like, and subscribe to Vegan know. Corn Hub. Make sure you do that on Instagram and YouTube so you get all of this amazing content wherever you are, whenever you want. You're going to love this show. I'm already loving it. You know what I'm excited about that we're going to be talking about today? Ooh. We're going to be talking about sex. Ooh, Let's talk deep. about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me, right? So when we think about sex, it's always around the, the thought about like where we are currently in our lives. And we never really think about it, where it's going to be, where we're going. So I would like to have you talk to our oh, friends at so, home. So I get to start talking about sex after 70. Sex after 70. I mean, was it different than sex after 60? You know, you that that was such a wild question. Was what it you, different than sex after sex? Listen, our bodies change, the way we think, the way we feel, and who's in our lives changes. But like, was it? Was there a difference? Because I can tell you, there was a big difference between sex after twenty and sex at almost forty for well, me. First of first of all, by the time you're seventy, if you ain't a pro at that. <laughs> You need to just go lay down and forget about it. <laughs> I didn't know anything at 20. Trust that. Nothing. By the time I was 40, I was getting better. It's just like but a ride by the bike. time I was 50 and 60, woo, woo! she was on fire. Fire. I mean, you might, you might have seen her on And 40, now though. that I'm 72, you better watch yourself. <laughs> now I like where you're going with this because when we talk about 20s no, it, it has a lot to do with experience experience so, yeah. right mm -hmm. like and sometimes remember experience doesn't always have to mean multiple partners though no. for many people it is for, for me that was what it was well, 20s multiple partners I, I you can brand me whatever you want to brand me but that was my experience and that was my journey what? nobody can sit around and try to be the goody two shoes and try to act like you wasn't counting them people on. Oh, shit, it was, I mean, I done had four of them, and I didn't go with anybody. I, I did that. Right. I counted those people, and I'm right. like, oh, my God. And I would think that I was such a horrible person because I had sex with all these different people that I really didn't even know, and I really felt guilty about it when I was did young. You? I did When I was young. Like you felt guilty about the numbers? Well, come on. Listen, in our society... For some reason, um, nakedness, sex always gets the like. Like, okay, take, 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 and, and we're not really talking about religion, but we're talking about the story. Mm -hmm. Mary has a baby, but she don't have no sex to have it. Mm -hmm. So, so that means the baby is better because she was a virgin than then a, a, a baby when you had sex. To have it. Now, now, the Immaculate now, Conception is yeah, a more palatable story I, I than never, actually being a... Yeah, yeah, I never got it. I just never... I'm sorry, y'all. I just never got it because it came off to me like you were saying sex was nasty. Sex was horrible. But if we do not have sexual intercourse, we cannot procreate. And so that intelligence that created all of this knew exactly what it was doing. You know, that's why he gave the male the penis and the female the vagina. You understand? Well, it is not bad. It is not nasty. But for some reason, the whole sex thing gets the, what do you think? Oh, that was so, that was deep. There though. was so much stuff in there but, to unpack. It um, was, but it's true. There's so much stuff to unpack because it's not just like, and I love for all my people there that are going by non-binary, that are like, oh, male and female and penis and this, let's just not go there because what we are really talking about is sex at birth. So yeah, when we're talking about we're talking this, about. and now when we're talking about sexual 
help post 70, it's a different thing. You got to vibe with who you vibe with. But at, I, I agree, you know, we are inherently designed to be attracted to a potential mate to procreate. Right. I will never procreate. <laughs> Well, you're not. That's a different story. Yeah, right. Eight billion people on planet. Stop having babies. <laughs> Sorry, whatever. Selfishly have babies. But I just said, point of the story being, sex at twenty was fueled by those androgens, testosterone, but hormones. Did you enjoy it? Did you? Enjoy oh hell it? yeah, I enjoyed I, it, I, girl. I, what I, are you talking? No, no, no. Let I me didn't. Tell you no, a story no, about I did how not. I no, it. let me tell you, because I was what I must have been. That must have been 1966 or something like that. Oh, you were in the prime. I, I mean, well, come on. I'm 72 years old. <laughs> but I, I didn't know what a climax was. Oh, my I had God. absolutely no clue Wait, what a climax was. You mean, but you, cause you, did you ever Now, 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 in sex, now, you now let, let me just explain something to you. I did figure out what it was to masturbate mm -hmm. the day of Martin Luther King's funeral. I was I was watching the funeral. I was sitting up in my mama's bed. I wasn't that strong. Watching the funeral on TV and figured it out. I was like during the MLK's fucking funeral. You you had an orgasm during his. Okay. I was like, what was that there, girl? What was that that we have to unpack? You have an orgasm during a funeral. But but I'm just trying to tell you. It's just part of my little journey. It is. But no, nobody else had made me do that. Mm. We handle stress in different ways. You know, and sexual, sexual expression is really a relief. But at that moment, I wasn't sad. I, I, that was a discovery. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let, let me just tell you, that's why I say the first time I kissed a guy and this kid didn't know what he was doing, we he brought me home we went to a dance and he was bringing me home and he kissed me and he sucked my tongue <laughs> for the whole kiss so by the time i got home i could not suck because my tongue was <laughs> so basically gentlemen do don't... not suck it. <laughs> and if you suck it too hard <laughs> how old were you when you had your first kiss. I must have been only like 15 or something like that. Wow. I can remember we went to a school dance really? and he kissed me going home and he sucked my tongue for the whole kiss. I, he didn't know what he was doing. That, that ain't a kiss. I can't believe it. Look at the talk. I can't, I can't believe you got, you got your tongue. The first, your first kiss was after I lost my virginity. I lost my virginity super young, 14 years old, which I do not wish upon anybody. I don't think that, that that sort of development and exploration is something that is intended for children. Well, wait a minute. How did that happen to you at 14? What? I had major issues. My, you know, I love my family. I love Whoa. my father. My father wasn't around raising us because he was a person of color living in the South and Virginia he didn't have a job. He never got a job with a PhD in physics from Notre Dame. And so my father chose to live up north in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, please let people know when you talk about of color, you're not, she's not talking about an African-American person. I, I'm Bangladeshi. My parents are from Bangladesh. And go. so we grew up Muslim, Deshi. And my father didn't have the capacity to get a job in Richmond, Virginia, because he was not white. Wow. And so he, as a male Muslim wanted to provide for his family, lived up north wow. in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where he so got he his, had to stay there. He stayed well, there um, and he was sending money down for my, my mom was the first woman of color, international hire at University of Richmond in 1986. What? Um, and so we battled racism a lot, you know, growing up. But this is that, that's, I don't want, so I didn't, I didn't have my dad for my formidable years of my childhood. <clears throat> Wow. And so I, I, I was seeking it. And when I went to high school, I found the bad boy. I remember right. my teacher saying, like, what are you doing? You're, and I was like, what are you talking about? You don't even call me Shabnam. Wow. You, you're like, Shabnam. You don't appreciate me and where I'm from. But the point was, I did not have the guidance and the structure and the environmental system to rear me to, my mama couldn't do it on her own. She was working full time, raising two kids. Right. To, and she did the best that she could. And she did an amazing, immaculate job. She did a wonderful job. We never had to struggle. But I did end up finding 
finding some sort of help, some, some male guidance in sex when I was really young. And that's wow. what I wanted to get it down to is that I lost my virginity at 14. It, it was a, it, it ruined my life for really? many years. It did because I went off the rails. I dropped out of NHS. I started doing drugs. I started drinking and that was my journey. But I, I think for children, they, it's too early. I, I know, but listen, I don't like saying your experience ruined your life, even during that time. It was a part of the human journey, the experience. Whatever it was you were doing then, you needed to learn what it was you learned as you moved on in your, in your journey, uh, your human journey. And my poor Period. journey really I mean, impacted my parents. But come on, I went through rape, I went through abuse, I went through... But my life was, it, it, it's not that our lives were ruined. We were just where we were at the time. That's true. And thank God we were able to move through it. Yeah. And I and, think when and, you have supportive structures. You've been enlightened by it. Yeah. There's so much I would never have dreamed or imagined that you started so young or early. I would have never because of who you are right now. But I tell you this, then my dad ended up moving back in with us mm -hmm. and I was grounded for years. My parents dropped me off at every chorus show so and the volleyball strict. at friends they house. Strict. I mean, I had they 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 straight me back got, out. Yeah. And it was love and it was my dad entering back into the family unit Good. that really changed my perspective on what what sex should be with another partner, not because I have like right. my dad's impact, but like when you think about a father male figure providing compassion, right. a sense of safety, when you have that present in your life, you don't really seek it in other mm, places. True, right? true. And so, so that's why in my twenties, when my dad, you know, I went off to college, I was like, oh, now this is fun, right? Yeah. Because it isn't about seeking something what I'm missing here it was like what am I missing here right, right. Got it. <laughs> and I had a really good time yeah. I had a really good, had time. A good time I was very safe I, and I was very lucky I think so how many years would you say felt dark in your journey oh my God. when you talk about it ruined your life for a period how many years felt dark I, I think it ebbs and it flows and that's a great question because they were I'm almost 40 now and so I think I've had a year patch year, a three year patch year, a six month patch year. Mm -hmm. So out of my 39 years of this life, there's probably a good six years of that where I've been like, damn. Mm -hmm. Got it. I, I thought about not wanting to wake up the next day. I, and, and you know, the, the weird thing about that, that I've, I've thought about, what if I just end all this? I've had that thought before and then very shortly after that thought, I'd be like, I ain't ready to go nowhere now. That's all right. right. You know, I, so I never really considered myself suicidal, even though, like yourself, I went through those patches yeah. where it just felt so hard and it was sad and that sort of thing. But man, I've come out better every, after each and every time I went through anything horrible it seems like I became better and more enlightened and, and how did sex play a role in that like have so, you ever used sex as like a tool to like make you feel better or just ignore things you know or? what the thing with me was uh with sex I was um I was I was uh, I wasn't real great at it and and I it wasn't because I was just fired up about it like I just loved it so much I did it I always just did it because the guy wanted to do it. It wasn't like I'm just thirsty for it. No. Now, you talk about sex after 70. Mm -hmm. uh, th and uh, now I can be thirsty. Now I can. It's different. And when I got in my 60s, 50s, and 60s, then, then I had more of a desire for it. I enjoyed it more. I understood what it took for me to reach a climax. And I understood how to share myself and give my all and I um and become really, really good at it. But that's because will. I think you know yourself more, right? Like yeah. after your mid thirties, yeah. you're like, damn. I, I this is who I am. This is who I am. This is where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. And this is the journey I know I wanna take. Right. Up right, until right, that right. point you're kinda like 
usually a majority of us are like willy nilly, like right. floating through the universe trying to figure shit out. And then I had I had gotten raped before and had to have a, a, a gave my went and found some woman in the neighborhood to give me an abortion because I got pregnant. Wait, this how, person, this how person, long ago? How, how this old was you? I was like maybe seventeen. Oh my God! Something like that, and I um. This person was on their way to prison for killing somebody. And, um, you know, it's a bunch of us friends in the neighborhood. And we, we did a lot of walking back in the day. You know, it would be, it would, it might be a mile, but walking was no big deal for right. us. And I remember him saying to me, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to take it. He's getting ready to report to prison like the next day. I, I, why was I even with this person? But he was my friend. You know what I mean? That was the community I grew up in. Yeah. And he he took it. And I got pregnant. And he was in prison. And so there was a woman in the neighborhood that we Wait, could call. Did he rape you? He raped me. He took it. Yes. He raped did me. you did you and I got him pregnant. Did you did you fight? Like He you... was on his way to prison for murdering somebody. So you just took it? I accepted it. He went to prison. And I found somebody in the community to give me uh, uh, an abortion. And she gave me an abortion with uh, ivory liquid and pine saw. She gave me an enema. No, it, yeah. Is it like she do? She you? gave me a douche. Yeah, I said the enema. I was going <laughs> to shit. Did she go up your butt? <laughs> so the and douche so, is the not butt And version. so that's why this whole um, thing about people and... And everybody have an opinion about who should keep a baby and who shouldn't keep a baby. And you know what? You need people with all their opinions need to stay in their lanes. Because not one of us is drawing 100%. Not one of us walking this planet today is running 100%. Everybody got something they doing that somebody else would shake their heads at. Absolutely. So, I've had people make comments about the fact that I, uh, 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 that lady, consequently, I, I heard, wound up going to jail, too, because I think somebody died from that concoction uh, back in the day. But I, I took an $80 paycheck. I had a summer job. $80 paycheck to pay this woman to do this. And um, I never even told my mother, but I do remember bleeding like almost bleeding to death buckets of blood my best girlfriend lived with us at the time and she helped me through it i didn't have any medication for pain i had no medication for in case i got an infection nothing this lady just 60, gave me 65 years ago uh -huh. it's a different it's, it's, it's totally and so but but the whole thing sex over 70 is like wow where i am now conscientiously Compared to where I was all of those years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am such a different person now. Mm -hmm. And and for me, I think the pleasure of um, the intimacy when it when it comes to sexual intercourse, I think is wonderful. But it's really wonderful when you're doing it with somebody you, love. you desire yeah. to do it with. Absolutely. Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> you know, you ought to stop. I have lots of sex. I have lots of sex. I think I think sex is an incredibly important aspect of yes. any any relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. And you know But it shouldn't start off that way. I think no. friendship is better. It's and, imperative. and honesty is better. Remember it sex is just sex. Have a friend first. Yeah. And I mean then it is watch the icing. You enjoy it, it is the icing on the cake and it and it becomes so much more of like not a glue, but kind of like a coagulant. I don't yeah. know how to say it. Like no, you just you can flow together, but you feel sticky with one another. My right. life feels better with you attached to this. Right. And but we move, we flow, we right. we, we we go. But it's it's um it's not the be all end all. Right. No, absolutely not. But yeah. it sh it is an important aspect in any relationship. And yes, people do have sex all of a sudden. So what's it like? Like, do you feel like that you got to, like, warm up beforehand? You know what? You ought to stop asking me <laughs> any questions. It's like I said, me, I said, I said, no, no. 
for all you babies out there that got that same little dumbass question. <laughs> it's like doing a hundred push-ups for your 72nd birthday. It's like that. Yeah, and how many of those have you done? So after? my point is, if you've taken care of yourself, if you've practiced self-love and self-care, sex will be enjoyable to you. But now, if you've decided that you're just going to get old and stuck and, and, and you allow your body to do that, then sex is going to be like everything else. Sex is going to be like walking. Sex is going to be like getting in the bathtub and trying to get your ass out. Sex is going to be like all those things yep. that are hard to do because it is a part of the human experience. But when you don't care for this this thing here, this body, it, everything gets difficult. So that's that's the only difference when it comes to an older person in sex and a younger person. Older people wear themselves out physically. Yeah. And then it's like, eh, or, or, or you don't look the same way and you don't feel like you're attractive or you don't feel like you're sexy. And well, I am all that. <laughs> So. But I think people in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s also feel like, I don't look good enough. I'm not attractive. I, I get in my head. Get past all, you got to get past to. all of that. You, you know we do. Because really, sex, that's why friendship is so important. Sex, it just starts in the heart. It really, it starts in the heart. And um, who cares about the looks? I mean, we get, we, we're so superficial. That's... That's another part of the human thing that we do is we're always looking at how somebody look and all this kind of stuff. And man, what about the heart? Mm -hmm. What about the heart? Mm -hmm. Because the most gorgeous looking person could be just such a nasty, nasty individual, hideous, horrible individual. And you and and you've pa overpassed somebody who is just precious and warm and just loving you for that look. And that's all you got was a look. So would you say the key to having like great sexual health in your 70s is building, building you up first? Well, you always have to care for you. You always have to take care, care of you. There's absolutely nothing on this planet that you want to do. If you don't care for this, this human body, if you don't care for this, you're going to... you. Part of that experience, all that physical activity and enjoyment, you're gonna you're gonna miss part of that because this no longer will 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 allow you to do those things. You understand what I'm right. saying? And I'm not talking about a wrinkle in your face. I don't right. care about that. Right, right, right. But can you get in the bathtub and step out by yourself? That's true. Can you go down and tie your shoe and get up by yourself? That's true. Like, can you see yourself? You trying to have some sex? Mm -hmm. yes, sit, sit down. down. Sit, sit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, you got to take care of yourself. Sex ain't just like, I don't know what kind of sex you think you about. You better be ready to make it happen. And I think the most. You understand what I'm I saying? I do. And, but I also think the most common misconception is that people are like, okay, well, once I get beyond a certain age, I guess that goes too. Well, that's what that's what people are stupid enough to think. That's right. And but yeah, let me tell you a little bit about the statistics. The statistics show that STD rates or STIs now, sexually transmitted infections, have grown tremendously through the older adult population, fifty-five and plus. Really, fifty-five and plus seems to have the highest what? amount of growth rate in are STIs, particularly post-pandemic. Are you kidding? No. Now, the greatest population that has it, of course, are uh, teens and early 20s. Right. Okay? Because you're doing things pretty irresponsible. People. But why Why do you think? Why do you think it happens? They're more active? Sexually. Sexually. Yeah. With multiple partners. Active. Because think about it. If you're living in an assisted living community, okay, which a lot of older adults That's have to true. do. And I'm not That's saying, true. like, you have to be in a nursing home. Right. Assisted living but is assisted living, living in a community, right. in a neighborhood yeah, community, right. where people are driving they they live in, right yeah. but they show that because after a certain age and you're in this community people tend to have mess around have multiple partners wow. and they don't think of themselves as being uh having that, that yeah being, being susceptible to thank those you. diseases and stuff like that but it doesn't matter how old you are that is incredible 
And another thing, wow. there is a 2020 study, and this was actually done by the CDC, CDC Sexually Transmitted Disease Surveillance 2020 report. So you guys can look this up on the internet. We will be plugging in the link right here. And there's also a great Forbes article that talks about this. Um, but they're saying there are multiple reasons why people do this, right? Not only do you have access to more people, but imagine if you've been with somebody for 30, 40, 50 years, and then mm -hmm. your partner dies. Oh, yeah. You've been with one person for a one long time, person. and now you get right. to be like, yo, I'm 18 on the market again. Right. You follow that same pathway as most younger adults younger do. People? Wow. So you still got to wrap it. Stick to you your still got to wrap it. You got to wear your condoms. You, what she's saying. you, you got to wrap, wrap it. Like, be it. safe. But also there was an interesting aspect in this in the CDC report that talked about what if you're an older adult that's dealing with things like Alzheimer's or you're dealing with memory issues and memory yeah. losses. Yeah. So now you're having sex and you're slightly forgetful. Yeah, but but are those people really having sex? Damn right they are. Are they? Listen, if you can be capable and functional. No, if, I, if, if I had Alzheimer's and don't know my ass from a hole in the ground, I ain't thinking about having no sex. You never know. You could think you're an 18 years old, back in the army now. You see some hot little toddy walk by at your nursing home. You're like, hey, mama. You know. Hey, mama. She is, she is a wild woman. Listen, I think when it comes to... I just never thought about natural it. Natural desire. Never thought about it doesn't it. stop. And that's what you're here to tell them, right? Like, Because you still get that feeling from time to time. You stupid. <laughs> Please, God, she please she tell she me you got that feeling from time to time. to tell y'all. I do. I, well, I, I do. have a husband, so, so, you know, whatever. But you guys just remember this. I do have a husband, and I ain't dead. And I want y'all to please subscribe, like, and follow us on vegancornhub.com. That's right, because you're only gonna get these little tidbits right here on Vegan Cornhub because this is where you, you get some more in my personal world. More BS. And I want some more BS here because I, I do. I wanna I wanna I wanna hear it like like okay. I'll I'll be I'll, let me start. Okay. Usually I am not the instigator of the sexual prowess in this house. I'm glad this topic is we're gonna be done today with this topic. Because I think I need a little prodding, like somebody like, hey girl, like let me just kiss on your neck a little. Okay. But then you, you still, I can see that. Yeah, I, but I need that. I'm not gonna You're be like, baby. come here, which I do sometimes if if it's necessary. Okay. But you enjoy, you I, enjoy the foreplay. I enjoy, you enjoy the hunt. The, the you know, hunt. right? I enjoy right, being right. hunted. And 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 you know, not by you people at home. But you know what's incredible? <laughs> do you know how many people out there don't realize? how important the hunt is. I like to call it foreplay. I mean, you could be talking to somebody on the phone for a week mm -hmm. and just shooting certain things at each other for a week, making each other because you know you're gonna get together this weekend. Yeah, the excitement. All knows. of that excitement is just drawing you in. It's just making you desire it and you can hardly wait. But I mean, you know, See, she's still got a kick. Oh, no, no, I, know up. I know what's up. <laughs> but but I mean, there are a lot of people that don't don't know how to roll with that. Yeah. They don't know how to be do, be, be a part of that and make it, it, it to me. It stretches the whole experience oh, yeah. out. Oh, Can yeah. you imagine just every day you're playing with each other like that yeah. when you know it's Thursday, coming. it's yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah then that, that's healthy to me. I agree. But then there are a lot of people that don't know how to do that. A lot of people. And I think that that's exactly what we want to be pushing people to realize it's completely possible. And it does happen after 70. Even though she's not trying to tell you all of her little... Do you do? Do you like to do anything special? Would you? No. I am not telling them. Come on. That. No, I know. Do you like... No, no, no lingerie. Like, have you seen yourself? You have so much lingerie, right? Like, do you? Do you know wear what? It? I am such a bum when it comes to lingerie and really? stuff like that. Yeah, I don't buy it. Now, I have. I remember when I was in Paris, France, I bought this cute little, you know, uh -huh. leather thing, and yeah, I I wore it when I got back to the states for for my husband. Um, but I can't find it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
just never kept up with lingerie. I don't even buy it. I didn't either. So it's just like, oh, naked me. Well, this is a good segue to, well, how is it when relationships end? I'm just kidding. Why is that? Are we talking about that one today? Yeah, we do. Are we talking about I that I do, today? because I think when we talk about relationships and sexual health, we also talk <clears throat> about, like, well, what what happens when it's done? You know what's really what's really odd? There are so many couples that live together and they no longer are intimate. They're no longer sexually active with each other. Um, and then sometimes I think those relationships are at they have become they've almost gotten to a fork in the road. And and really and truly, you're a little kind of over each other you know, the lifestyle as it is. And maybe if you took another path, you'd be a little bit more excited right. about it. Right. But now it's just like it's just a non subject to you. You you the two of you just that's not what you do. You just cohabitate. You just yeah. And it's um I don't think that's the healthiest thing. I, I think, agree. You know, because I believe that for as long as you're able to experience the beauty of, of a, 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 a relationship like that, um, the sexual experience, I think we should, but too many of us cannot say goodbye to, so, our, to our partners. So we, we nurture the cohabitation, but we fail to, to nurture the uh, sexual relationship. And deep it's because we don't, we don't care for it anymore. We don't want it anymore. And instead of us being honest with ourselves and our partners, we just stay there. We just stay there and we stop. And um, we, we all go through that. We go through not wanting to hurt because if you, you love somebody and, and after years of being married with somebody, you become family members. You, Absolutely. You are truly relatives at that point. Absolutely. And now maybe you're in a relationship and you're not necessarily ready to um, get kick your family member out. But you ain't in all that other stuff y'all used to do. Maybe that's over. Mm -hmm. You understand? I just feel like we still cut our stuff short because we can't be honest beginning with ourselves. Oh, my God. That's so true. Like, I, I'm divorced, and mm -hmm. I was in a marriage seven years too long. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we were married for seven years. We should have never gotten married. Mm -hmm. I, God bless this old Peter. A, he's a wonderful individual. Mm -hmm. We are just not good together. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it wasn't for him coming in, I was, I was hospitalized at the time and I was in the hospital, I think on my nine days and on the eighth day he came in and he said, I want a divorce. And honestly, at that point I was so like, Oh my wow. God, it broke me. But if he didn't have the guts so to end it, he had the guts to stop and it. And so now you say, thank you. I say, thank you. Wow. I say, thank you. Thank you, Peter, for having the guts to end what was not good for and both that of us. And is, it does take guts sometimes because we don't, that's why we lie to each other. I don't really owe you anything but the truth. That's true. But most of, and how you deal with that truth is not, that's not on me. That's 100% on you. Mm -hmm. I gave you the truth but we don't do that we're so concerned about if this person was telling me that how would i feel and right we don't do it right that's not your issue your issue is honesty and and when i speak to you i speak to me you know what i'm saying it, it just it just happens and we just like you say you just stay in a relationship you just stay there and you stay there and you run out and then after a while you did and um, I, I, it shortens the it shortens the human experience, I say, because that's not where you really want to be. Right. You know. I mean, you know, you have you've been married. No, I've been multiple married. Times. This this is my fourth marriage. Right. And um, but but even even when it, it was like maybe fifth or sixth person that I've been with. Not everybody was a husband. Right. But you understand what I'm saying? But I, I can remember most of the reasons um, that that I'm not, I, I, I got out of the relationships with certain people um, is because they were just unhealthy. You know what I mean? Wow, we, really? We, well, in terms of, like my first husband, I got married him as a child. We were kids. 
that's my daughter's father and uh he was into drugs and alcohol and i was working and finally it was just like i'm leaving you this guy has a cadillac and more money and he has a nightclub so i'm gonna go with him so he can hook my daughter and i up and i'm not broke mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then i learn about crack cocaine so then i start getting sick you understand so it's it's all about the journey and what it is you've gone through and then I hook up with the, the old man with the nightclub. And the next thing you know, he beats me up, body slams me, cold cocks me, the whole nine yards. Finally, I get away from him. Then I meet a brand new person. And we just get married just because I need operation. I've got some kind of, I've got some kind of illness and I need a surgery. And he's got a job and, and he's got insurance and he was willing to marry me. Listen to this this is my journey he's willing to marry me um so i can get this surgery so it only lasted seven months shut up. it only lasted seven months and he stole my income tax check and then i didn't see him again until just recently he came into the restaurant on my 72nd birthday and said hello anyway and so that was that guy okay wait a minute <laughs> just a reminder to hear more stories like this you need to like subscribe and follow oh. vegan corn hub because these nuggets of gold don't happen anywhere else. He came into he the came restaurant into the on my 72nd birthday. Did he birthday. do the push-ups? No, he had just had he a did. hip replacement. Of course anyway, he did. That's what, but, you, that's what you get. But then that income I, tax I, I, I get away from him and I meet, I meet somebody that I met years ago. But this person invites my daughter and I into his home. We wind up getting married and mm -hmm. our whole life. The drugs go away. I get a job with the airlines and everything starts leveling out wow. in my life. Wow. And he and I buy a home together, but I am I cheated on him. Your heart just wasn't there? It wasn't there. He was a good guy. He really was a good guy. And he was good to Trees. He was good to my daughter. And, we, and he got us, it was stability. And how old, how old were you at that point? And he's tw he was like 15, 20 years older than me. Uh -huh. um, so how I was, old were you then? I must have been, shoot, I must have been in my, when did I go? 1980. I don't know, I must have been in my 30s. Wow. Something all like of that, all that journey. Of that. And then, your 30s. and then I wind up, um, he and I, I wind up going to him, telling him, ah, I'll help you pay these bills, but I want out of the relationship. Day after that, he had a U-Haul truck, moved all of his stuff out, and he he left. He gave me no battles, no nothing. He was just really a, a old a good guy. guy. He was a good guy. And um, then I met Rondo, uh, my current husband, and um, we we knew each other for two years, and then we decided to get married. Now, out so, of all of those experiences, I think that before Rondo, your mm -hmm. next husband was the best way on how to end a relationship. It started with you being honest. Mm -hmm. yes. It started with him it. having a pitch and a fit. Right. He did not pitch beating you. He just accepted he accept what it was. Exactly. And honored you. It, exactly. And honored your daughter. He sure did. And honored he, himself. And he got the house for us and he did all the yard work, our home. It was a corner house. It was beautiful. Got the kitchen redone. He left it all overnight. I went to him, had the conversation, got him a U-Haul truck, and he was out. Wow. I talk to him today now. I, I'm friends with him still. And I and I let him know that he brought a lot of stability into my life. And um, it wasn't really him. I wasn't ready. I love that you talk about this because now when we think about ending a relationship and I've kind of been somebody like this, that once I'm done with you, I got to be done because there's probably been so much hurt and so much stuff mm -hmm. that I just, I can't revisit. And for me, it's really challenging. And what I love about you, Babs, is that you've really just been like, okay, well, I'm not that person I was back then. Mm -hmm. I've always recognized that you have good in you and you can, you can still enter my life in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. That works. So the relationship ending doesn't mean that that person ends no. in your life. Mm -hmm. It just means that that existence. It's, it's the, the beautiful maturity of it all to be able to go to someone, and and have that conversation with them, um, and and not not necessarily putting yourself in their shoes, because you can't fit their shoes. You just have to tell them the truth.
that's 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 the hardest part telling them the truth well how hard do you think it is for people to tell themselves the truth it's so hard we lie to ourselves all the time all the time all the time and um that that's when i feel like we're not we're not taking responsibility um for, for even just any of the things that we go through mm -hmm. on this journey, journey, we like to point a finger mm -hmm. and act like it happened because of that. No, it happened because of you. And that's what I was talking about yesterday with the Tabitha Brown thing. Mm -hmm. My life is my life because of me, y'all. Your life ain't your life because of nobody else. I don't give a dang what you've been through. Your life is your life because of you. Our thoughts manifest every single thing that happens in this human experience. Trust me, you got some lousy, dirty thoughts? Expect those kind of things to, you know, manifest. So manifestation, it, it, it really does begin with your mind, doesn't it? It absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. So to really just have a better relationship with yourself, you mm -hmm. need to be honest. And I like to say it this way, like, you know, do you want to be the friend that gets your friend laughed off of American Idol because you told them the whole time that they got the greatest voice ever? Oh, my. You got a great voice. You got a great and voice. They, and then they go and they do it, and they're humiliated. Humiliated. Them. Why didn't you tell them the truth? You got to do that for you. Yeah. You got to realize that this is basic maths, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. If A plus B equals C, mm -hmm. if me plus Babette equals a fight, and me plus Baji equals a fight, if me plus mm. my mom equals a fight, the only variable mm. that is the same in that equation you. is you. Wow. So true. So true. This and, is a good one. Right? And I think that's where we have to leave you today. I'm going to leave it there. And we thank you so much for joining us for more mm -hmm. BS <laughs> only on Vegan Corn Hub. Just make sure you follow, like, comment below. Tell Please. us what you want to Tell us what you want to be seeing and what you want to be hearing because we are here for you. And again, please subscribe to Vegan Corn Hub. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. See you again.